You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of the Options Playbook. All right. Uh, We are taping Options Playbook Radio on July 13th. The markets are closed. We had a weird day today in the marketplace. CPI numbers came out. Uh, Everybody was hoping inflation was waning. Uh, And we're seeing some indications from the commodities that it should be waning. We see oil prices coming down. Uh, Food prices are a big thing. And the cost of wheat has actually came down uh, over the last, let's say, couple of weeks or so. And so people were saying, well, maybe we'll get a little bit of a decrease in the CPI, but uh, it came out higher than expected. Uh, markets were odd. Uh, we saw the S&P 500 index down 17 on the end of the day. And we also saw the VIX come off a little bit. So once again, we had the, the VIX or the S&P 500 index go down and the VIX, which is related to the options in the S&P 500 index, that also went down. And it's just always... Uh, kind of crazy to me that the VIX index and uh, and how it's reacting to the potential that we could be going into a recession uh, and by by just hanging around the 25 26 level not really spiking up at all uh, I'd really like to just have one nice down day uh, get the VIX up above the 40 45 even 50 level it wouldn't be Uh, unfathomable to me and uh, get that moment of capitulation where you could say, well, maybe that was the bottom, that type of thing. But we just really haven't had that. So the markets have been mixed uh, lately. Uh, Today's news, you could have seen uh, drive the markets quite a bit lower. Instead, they were just a little bit lower. And um, here we are. So what do we talk about? I mean, uh, the theme of Options Playbook Radio recently has just been bottom fishing. Uh, do looking at strategies that uh, on stocks that maybe are recessionary proof. We talked a little bit about Oli's. We talked a little bit about Pfizer uh, on some of the shows, and th- these are just you know Pfizer's in the pharmaceutical area. Uh, it's it's trading at like nine time er- nine times earnings right now. Uh, Google right now is not da- trading down around nineteen time times earnings. So we're just Stocks are getting getting beaten up. Uh, they're a little bit cheap. They're all all saying that there could be some troubles ahead, and so the stocks just really haven't been taking off. Well, Google announced the stock split when they announced the stock split back in March, which was a long time ago for a stock split. Um, the stock actually ran up above three thousand. I think on that day. I, 
I'm not 100% sure I should have checked this out before the podcast, but I think it went to about uh, 3,025, somewhere right in that range. I know it didn't close there, but it made a strong move above 3,000. So instantly the stock started dropping uh, after that big announcement. And here we see Alphabet right now trading at $2,227.07. $2,227.07. So really odd stopping point for the stock. It was down $53.34 on the day. All right. So long ways away from $3,000, uh, which it, where the stock was at after they made the announcement of the split. So well, flip a coin. Amazon did a split. Stock ran up into the split and then went back down after the split. So the concept of a split doesn't do anything fundamentally to the stock. We've talked about that many times, and a lot of people talk about that. It just makes it more affordable to, for someone to be able to buy a nice round 100 share lot. And some people think that that will drive prices on these stocks higher. So let's get a little bullish on, on Google. And how would we approach it? And what are some of the trials and tribulations of trading in a stock that's going to go through a stock split? And one of the big things is realizing that the strike is going to change. All right. So if you owned one share of Google on July 18th, that's the Monday Monday after the official split on the Friday, the 15th, for every one share of stock, you're going to end up with 20 shares of Google or Alphabet or whatever you want to, whatever whatever your, your choice would be. On the option contracts, for every one contract that you own, you're going to end up with 20 contracts or any contracts that you may have sold, right, in your account, you're going to end up with 20 contracts. And when you do that, the strike is also going to change. So you take the strike and you divide that by 20. Uh, the expiration date, nothing happens with that. That stays the same. But also the price of that option contract is going to be divided by 20. And it's going to open somewhere, obviously, depending on where the actual underlying stock is and what happens. But it's going to be a lower price as far as the option contract is concerned. Now, with that said, the goal is that if the stock was unchanged, basically, or the options prices were unchanged, that the market value inside your portfolio of your options on Friday will be the same market value without regards to movement of the underlying stock as your portfolio on Monday after the split. And once again, not adding any value, not taking anything away. You're going to have more contracts, but they're going to be trading at a lower price. So now is when I'm going to uh, direct you towards an article that I wrote inside the Ally community. And if you Google my name using the Google search engine and you put in Alphabet or Google stock split, uh, you'll be able to find it. And in there, I... They have a video that goes into detail about all the math that's behind it. And then also it will go into detail a lot of the headaches. And one of the headaches I'm going to emphasize here is that if you're taking a strike price and you're dividing it by a big number like 20, a lot of times you're going to end up with fractional strike prices like uh, 0.33 or 0.18 or depending on what that uh, number was inside the strike price, uh, you're going to end up with some strikes that are just going to be fractional. And I want to avoid those strikes. If I'm buying option contracts after the split, I want it to be a nice, round, even number. Now, if Google does the split, so if you take the current price and you divide that by 20, uh, if the stock didn't move, but it probably more than likely will, but based off of today's price, it's going to be trading at $111.35, $111.35, if the stock stays right where it's at. So the strike prices that we're going to look at, uh, we're going to do something that's within the expected move uh, uh, by the expiration date, and that expiration date that we're going to pick is going to be July 29th. It's going to be after the split, but it's not going to be really close to the split. We're going to give a little bit of time for uh, the underlying stock to digest the fact that the stock went through the stock split. And on 
the strikes that we're going to look at, uh, they're going to be about a 60-point wide spread. We're going to be doing a long call spread. We're going to go 60 points wide. If you take 60, the width of the spread, and you divide that by 20, that means when it's all said and done, we're going to have a three-point wide long call spread. So we're it's going to be fairly expensive because we still got a very expensive underlying. So it's a little bit more on a on a speculative trade than we talk about here on Options Playbook Radio. And I always emphasize that these aren't meant to be recommendations. We're just trying to learn here. And more importantly, we're talking about a mega cap stock that's going through a split. And these are the things that you want to learn. If you want to get bearish on the stock, you can you do a long put spread on the other side, but you still want to be very cognizant of the strike prices and what you're going to end up with after the split. So if you do an 80 point wide, uh, uh, 80 point wide long call spread or long put spread, you're going to end up with a four point wide spread after the split. You just take that number, the width of the spread, and you divide it by 20. Okay, so that's probably my biggest concern because if you have fractional strikes in a stock like Google, it's a very liquid underlying. But if you think of it on your aspect, if you come in after the split and want to buy options, you're usually not drawn to that odd strike option contract, right? You want to have a nice round number that you'd rather trade. So the 2400 strike call that we're going to be selling in this instance uh, is going to end up being a 120 strike call. And then we're going to do 60 points wide. So we're going to be buying the 2340 strike call. And that will end up as the 117 strike call when it's all said and done. And by the way, I'm going to mention, you know, Google's got three different stocks now that trade, one that doesn't trade publicly, but based off of the last split, which I go through in the article that I wrote in the Ally Community Hub, uh, they came up with class A, B, and C. And the symbol that I'm using today is G-O-O-G-L. Uh, that's the symbol that we are that I'm getting the quotes off of. All right. Okay. So as I mentioned, this isn't going to be a cheap trade because Google is still a $2,227 stock. So to go that wide, which is 60 points wide, we're going to end up paying $16.50 at the midpoint for that spread now the markets are closed at this point in time so a lot of times the, the markets get a little bit artificially wide as as we get into the close but that means that you're spending one thousand six hundred and fifty dollars plus commission that will be your max risk on this trade and the width of this the the trade is 60 points so they take 1650 you minus 50 points the max upside is 4350 or on a dollar basis it's $4350 less commission on that trade that would be the maximum that it could trade for now one thing that's nice is after the split you're going to have 20 contracts so it's good. so you can leg out of this trade so you could sell 5 of the 20 or 10 of the 20 let the other 10 ride um and that's uh, obviously a, a nice thing about a lower price stock is that you just aren't spending so much for just one option contract. To let you know what I mean by so much, if we were to just buy the Google call outright, the 2340 strike call, right now that's trading at a, around the midpoint of 4750 just for one call option. So $4,750 if we didn't spread this one off. And that's part of the reason why we are doing a spread. Now, I also want to emphasize that we're staying within the expected move. That's why I chose the strikes that I, I chose, because I looked at what's the most at the money put and the most at the money call for that expiration, July 29th. Where are they trading at? And right now, the midpoint on that is 189. So we round that off. It's not an exact science, right? We say it's 190. So if you do 190 plus where the current stock price is at, 222.7, you come up with 2,417. So that's the reason why we sold the 2,400 is we want to be within that expected move. We don't want, we're, we're speculating, but we want to be able to be with 
We want to take what the market is giving us. And the market is saying that a, a feasible move, and it does no regard to direction to the downside or to the upside, is around 190 points. So we don't want to go above 190 points on the strike that we're selling, the strike that we're targeting, that we want that underlying stock to finish at. All right. So uh, if we do this trade, let's go and just do a real quick synopsis. Google, i.e. Alphabet, is going to be going through a 20 for 1 stock split. They're going to trade split adjusted on Monday, the 18th. For every one share of Google that you had in your account prior to the split, you're going to end up with 20 shares. For every one contract that you may have bought or sold in your account, you're going to end up with 20 contracts. If you have a option contract, the strike price is going to be divided by 20. The price or the premium of the option contract is going to be divided by 20. And based off of where the underlying stock is at, uh, the option contracts will trade for less than where they're currently trading, but it will de definitely depend on the fluctuations of the marketplace and alphabet uh, uh, in general. All right. So our trade is. We're going to buy the July 29th expiration. We have 16 days remaining till that expiration date. Uh, 2340 strike call and sell that same expiration 2400 strike call. Max risk of this trade is $1,650 plus commission. And we'll come back next week and we'll talk a little bit about where it's at. And maybe we adjust it. Maybe we don't. But uh, it's going to be a, definitely an interesting week in Google. And that's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have any questions you'd like us to discuss on the show, you can email them to me at theoptionsguy at invest.li.com. If you want to know more about our educational events, you can just follow me on Twitter. I tweet about all of them. It's at Brian Overby. And thanks for listening. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. <laughs>